What's up, you two? It's shit, it's shit, it's shit, boy. Mr. Mr. Jackson. Let it What's up? What's up? What's up, YouTube? Right now you're hanging with Mr. Jackson. And it's been a while since we did a uh, reaction, y'all. So we about to do a 2K reaction, man, about Riney 2K, y'all. If you've been in the 2K community, yo, and you know Riney 2K, man, you can't really believe what that man say, y'all. But enough of that. Let's get into this um, reaction. The impression people get from you is that you feel like you're above us. And just because the world's shut down doesn't mean that you have to be shut down. You know, like this is a real great time to sharpen your, sharpen your, um, you know, what? sharpen iron. He's thinking about a lot. Is that you can completely rebuild your guy from scratch and use the v, you know VC that you had used <laughs> to lie. build your guy originally to just use him. You know, the gameplay is going to be so different from what it is today to then that it's not even, you know. People jump to conclusions <laughs> on what they saw in terms of the neighborhood in this Scare trailer. Um, that's not the neighborhood, but you guys can think whatever you want. You don't want to build 17 my players. You don't have to. You can respect them so many times. I believe you can respect as many times as you want. When it comes to success, for a lot of things, it really just comes down to your ability to identify a problem or a gap in the market, then providing a solution. A solution so good that it can't be easily replicated or stolen by the competition. This is why poet Maya Angelou once said, you have to dare to be different. Different can mean a yeah. lot of things. An example being there's fame and then there's infamy. And there's nobody more infamous in the gaming community than Ronnie 2K. NBA 2K's current acting head of digital lifestyle marketing. He mm -hmm. first started out as NBA 2K's community manager back in 2008, but many of us, including myself, hadn't heard of him until around 2k 14 to the 18 days see as the game sure, i ain't heard i don't think i yeah i heard about Rodney 2k to uh yeah 2k um 2k 16 yo but i've been um uploading 2k since 2k 13 but i ain't heard about them too because i'm i was the type of person you know i used to be on twitter and all that stuff looking up nba 2k stuff and and i only watched like three people back then i, I, I was like it was chris move um, QJB and um, Gentle and and I watch um iPod Ken Carter too, watched a little bit of him too, y'all. But no, let's, let's get back into it. So I ain't really know him to 2K16. The game grew in popularity due to game modes such as my career, park, and my team. The community began to express frustrations with the series on various social media platforms. It was there, the world began to notice red flags about this guy, which later led to some of the most drama-filled moments in gaming Bindu. history. Hi, my name is the Black Okage, AKA TBH. And to be honest, stick around to the end of this video because we're gonna be diving deep into who exactly is Ronnie 2K and why his name is so infamous within the 2K community. But before we do that, let's first learn about his- Follow him, y'all. Y'all can follow him. his channel right here, y'all. Follow him. That's his channel right there, y'all. Go we'll support him. Ronnie Singh, better known as Ronnie 2K, or as Flight likes to call him, Run up! was born November 14th, 1982, to two loving parents in the great republic known as California. Both his parents were blue collar, hardworking citizens, with his father being a truck driver and his mother being a seamstress. In his youth, he would attend Redwood High School, which is just 11 miles north of San Francisco. It was there that a young Ronald developed his passion for sports. He specifically took a liking to basketball, which shouldn't be a shocker to anyone. Being an 80s baby meant that a young Ronald grew up watching watching legends such as Magic Johnson, Larry Bird, and Michael Jordan. Ronnie became so enamored mm -hmm. with the sport that he even tried out for his high That's school me. varsity basketball team. And despite him standing at an impressive six foot three inches, he never made the team. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got MVP my After freshman year. I'm hours, way sure it is. At the time, by junior year, I was six one, and that hurt like hell, like to grow that fast. To grow, yeah. And also, like I was shoot, I'd, I'd be shooting, and all of a sudden, I'm like, why does my shot keep going further and further? <laughs> <laughs> so naturally, he did what a lot of failed athletes do, such as Skip Bayless, and he became a sports commentator for his high school. He went from snatching up rebounds off of the glass to snatching his school's microphone during home games to shout. But it's my turn. You told me it was my turn. It was there during those high school games that Ryan hey, found his new here. passion in a new calling called sports media. This early involvement in sports media would go on to lie the foundation for his future career in sports marketing and social media. But he knew he needed a solid education to make it in 
that field. So upon mm -hmm. graduating high school, Ronald attended the University of California at San Diego, go Tritons, where he earned his degree in economic management science with a minor in law. Upon graduating in 2004, Ronald joined the job market, and his first major gig would be a legal assistant for a couple of different firms such as Morris and Forrester and Fisher and Richardson. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Before Ronald spent all of his free time arguing with people online, he was helping lawyers argue in real life. And I have a <laughs> sneaky suspicion that being a legal assistant is where Ronald developed his passion for arguing with people. The thing is, though, when dealing with the court system, it requires someone capable of debating without involving their emotions, and that's something we all know Ronald isn't capable of. So nope. Ronald sought work elsewhere. Being a legal assistant is cool, but he wouldn't continue that line of work long because deep down he knew the hardwood was calling his name. I didn't think law was going to be what I thought it was going to be. I picture you know like the movies i picture you know like a lot of the the things that partners do watching come on man something, you know it, it wasn't that it, and not that i wasn't dedicated to it but i wasn't passionate the way i was passionate to uh, sports. So he left the legal field and he decided <laughs> to take a job working in the NWBL. Now, for those of you unaware, the NWBL stands for the National Women's Basketball League. It was a semi-pro women's basketball league that was founded in 1997. Ronnie served as the director of media relations for the San Diego Siege. In their one lone season, they had a respectable 14-4 and four record during the regular season. This earned them the number one seed in the playoffs, and they even made it to the finals before eventually being defeated by the Colorado Chill. Ronnie was responsible for coordinating with the players and organizing press conferences pre and post game sadly <sighs> the san diego siege folded he did a lot, yo. and eventually the entire nwbl did as well in 2007 this left a young ronald unemployed and looking for new work but it wouldn't be long before he found another gig see his hard work and determination led him to earning the role of director of operations for the san diego surf dogs baseball team the surf dogs was a minor league baseball team based out of san diego they were affiliated with three separate circuits including the golden baseball league the arizona winter league and the arizona summer league they were the 2005 gbl champs and the 2010 Arizona Summer League champs. Ronnie's first major W in marketing came with this team, and it was because he managed to sign the legendary juicer Jose Canseco to the Surf Dogs. We were looking to make a splash, and so they asked, they're like, hey, Ronnie, do you know anyone by, you know, like we were all brainstorming, like, well, I just happened to know Jose Canseco as a kid. It was right at the height of, you know, him releasing the juiced book. So we, we brought Jose on. A few days later, he found out we had a team in Long Beach. He was like, my daughter lives in Long Beach. Please trade me there. Then when he came back to visit us as a as an away player with the Long Beach Armada, he faced off against us. And the night before, me and my staff, like, went to Bonds and bought a bunch of grape juice boxes and, and stickers of his face. I don't remember where we found the stickers of his face but we basically applied a sticker of his face on all the juice boxes and turned it into w one of the bigger viral moments before social media that you know could, we could fathom it was on sports center was everywhere now because this was the minor leagues in the early 2000s i couldn't find videos on this i also couldn't find footage of the sports center coverage but i did manage to find an article on espn.com that dates back to 2006 referencing the jose canseco juice box night so this was a very real thing now i know yep. i'm cracking jokes here and there but i give credit when credit is due that marketing play from ronnie was pretty clever that man had juicing accusations all over him at the time and they played into it by creating custom juice boxes Yo, to give away to the fans he came you up some good ideas that's that an early form of troll a skill set that Ronnie would find later useful in his tenure on social media because it wasn't long after the Jose. Yeah, because that's all he do for um the 2K community, y'all. He troll. He lies and lies and lies and lie. And then people get on X and, you know, post all this negative stuff. All y'all doing, y'all, is y'all making that two more famous. Who is this Ronnie 2K everybody talking about? Who is this dude? And you get other people go look at his stuff. And you get more people go look at it. So can you got more people talking negative about him St still? And all they're doing is building up, yo. That's why I say when, when people give you like bad um, thumbs down or your own YouTube videos, man, keep them people. Don't ban no people. And when they say, say negative comments, keep them people in your, uh, under your channel. Because that's letting you know they're watching your channel. They, they seeing your video. And the more negative comments, the more dislikes, you still get paid for that. <laughs> See, Ronnie uh, master that. Yo, he know what he doing, yo. Zake and Zako stuff. Then Ronnie went from the minor leagues to the big leagues as 2Ks. <laughs> 
According to Ronald, he had been playing NBA 2K since the original game released on the Dreamcast and had Iverson on the cover, but he didn't really start taking the game seriously until about NBA 2K5. He claims he had a lot more free time to play the game when the minor league teams that he worked for were on the road, so that's what he did. He also spent some of that free time frequenting the 2K message boards. It was there in those forums where he built his name by creating interesting posts and conversations surrounding the latest game. I was a super fan and then I was sitting in those forums both before I started 2K and uh, at the beginning really prepares you for the way that you market, the way that you uh, customer service, the way that you develop a game, like all everything that you need to understand is it comes from the consumer and, and listening to them. And so um, that was a like a experience I wouldn't trade for the world. Eventually 2K took notice and they reached out to him for a job interview after a success. I right, yeah, we was gonna skip yo when he um joined because um we gonna skip around y'all we gonna be on it too long because this video is like forty seven minutes across, long. Comes across like one of those modern day fan pages that update you on news such as two K Intel or Charlie Intel. Matter of fact, just so you don't think I'm reaching, let's take a look at Charlie Intel's page. In their bio, it states we cover all things Call of Duty and general gaming news. That includes Black Ops Six, Modern Warfare Three, Warzone, Mobile, Xbox, PlayStation, and Activision. That literally sounds like a Call of Duty version of Ronald's Twitter bio from 2009. So you might be wondering, well, where are you going with this? I just find it funny that when Ronnie Two K first began his community <laughs> manager duty. He took it upon himself to cosplay as some type of NBA 2K info leaker. It's just so <laughs> ironic the type of content creator he talks shit about and won't invite to community day this day and age, you know, the I leaker know, right? is the exact type of content creator he was back in the day. It's funny to see how people forgot where they came from. And the only reason why what he was doing back then wasn't problematic is because of the lack of FTC regulations on social media in 2009. So legally, technically, he didn't do anything wrong at the time, but he did have in his bio, he was doing giveaways ways and didn't state that he was working for two just little, little shady, <laughs> little shady. Just he would be a sneaky yo he's he smart yo he's smart i ain't gonna lie to him. he's smart all right uh, we gonna skip up a little bit yo his role his role and his My responsibility to say seek the enemy of your enemy you will find a friend. Now, Ronnie2K is not my enemy, but he for damn sure is not my friend either. So for this <laughs> section of the video, I decided to take a play out of Rex's playbook and call up some enemies of my enemy. What I'm getting at is I reached out to as many 2K creators as I could and I asked him, what's the first thing that comes to mind when you hear the name Ronnie2K? I did not influence anyone's answer. I actually encouraged everyone to say whatever they like. Just be honest. That's all I asked. And here's the Yo. screenshot as proof. And what they said when I asked, what's the first thing to come to mind when you think of Ronnie2K? They said, what comes to mind when when thinking of Ronnie 2K, the online personality, I'll let these lyrics speak for itself. You a fan, a phony, a fake, a f you stand, I still whip your ass. You 36 in a karate class. You tie ball <laughs> hole, you trying to work it out, you trying to get brawler. Ask me if I'm trying to kick knowledge. Nah, I'm trying to kick that sh you need to learn. Yo. Though, that make your soul burn slow. Is he Dame Diddy, Dame Daddy, or Dame Dummy? Oh, I get it. You Biggie and he's puffy. I'm sorry, y'all, but that's what comes to mind. Now, I'm sure Ronnie's saying he's a good guy. Ronnie 2K. The first thing I think about when I hear the name Ronnie 2K is liar. I feel like most of the community feels that way. He'll say anything to market the game. This is history that can't be rewritten. When he decides to hang it up, that's how millions of people will remember him. First thing that comes to mind is what does he do? What did he do in the past to get the position that he got right now? Like for real, for real, no diss, and maybe this is a diss. I just don't know exactly what makes him so qualified for the position that he got right now, and especially to the point where he's talking and moving the way that he's moving. That's the first thing that comes to mind when I think of Ronnie 2K. Is Yo. What does he do? What's the first thing that I think of when I hear the name Ronnie 2K? Scapegoat. Most people are going to say some negative thing about Ronnie 2K. And look, I don't know the guy, but it's very clear what his role is. 2K are one of the most predatory companies when it comes to gaming. But nobody's out there blaming Strez Zelnik. Nobody's blaming the fact that they probably have as many people as any other company in the world on a live service team that's goal is purely to get people hooked on spending money on their games. He is the scapegoat. Every flaw with this game gets thrown on Ronnie 2K. What that means is the people that are actually making the detrimental decisions for 2K can get away with whatever the hell they want to do because no matter what, all the blame gets put. No, it get put on him because he lies, yo. People ask questions and he answers them. And they always turn out to be the wrong answer. <laughs> he lies. <laughs> we know he ain't the creator of the game. We know he ain't back in the back working on the game. But people is asking him questions that he should know.
and he lies. <laughs> That's it. I don't, I don't know who this dude is. I don't know. I don't know he's a fan of Rodney 2K. <laughs> but he must be watching Rodney 2K that much because this man literally lies all the time. Ronnie 2K. Ronnie 2K. <laughs> Look, the only thing I'm going to choose to say, there are a lot of high level creators, a lot of top tier 2K creators who don't have a relationship with 2K today, almost solely based off their relationship <laughs> with Ronnie 2K. So the first thing I think about when I think of Ronnie 2K, he is a bot. I don't know what Ronnie 2K does other than just exist and take pictures with Instagram celebrities, but at this point, he is just here to just be here. First thing that comes to mind is uh, Diva. Another will be, I'm sure, a word that's been thrown around all over the place is uh, a liar. Look, I understand that his job is to sell the game, but you don't do it at the expense of your consumers. It's almost Thank as you. if he chose commerce over conscience. Lately telling someone that, you know, oh, you're going to get Yeezys in 2K17 or another game where you're telling people you can respect your bills so you, you don't have he to lies. be 17 my players. And that's exactly I ain't what, get what that other dude was talking about. Because you weren't able to do that. And then him turning back around and saying that, well, oh, I was under the impression you could respect your bills. I do you not know if that's the case? He not. should don't know all that. If you're not sure of it, I don't speak on it if you don't know. In the process. What first comes to mind when I hear Ronnie 2K's name, I immediately think scam artist and liar. Right now, Ronnie 2K, I think, is just promoting whatever new rookie is. Remember, he went to law school. And what do most lawyers do? Lie. It's going to be out in the game to get the new annual release some cloud. Yeah. Last year it was Victor Wembignana. This year it's LeBron James's son. And he just kind of like gives a little suspense about the new rookie's overall rating. I just think that whole thing and the whole way he's promoting it is just such a weird way to do it. The only reason 2K even gets money and gets players is because it's the only basketball video game out there. I don't think Ronnie 2K boosts the sales in any way, shape, or form. Nope. The first thing he talked about and promised to the 2K community for NBA 2K20 was being able to respect your players. And guess what? When the game came out, there was no respect option. People were expecting it to come out in a patch. And guess what? It never Kay. did. The other thing that he Ow. lied about in the same year, as a matter of fact, was a new park. He promised a new park, a new revamped park. Guess what? When the trailer came out for the park, it was the exact same, same thing Ow. as NBA 2K19. Things that people <laughs> look forward to in the next NBA 2K release. He is just just a liar. I don't know yep. why people even follow him. Just a liar. He he a lawyer. Any we should expect clout to begin with and the community for whatever reason kisses up to him because they want to get you know invited to these stupid events that come around before the new 2k releases the first thing that comes to my mind when it comes to ronnie 2k is the fact that he's today we're testing the gen 7 0311 p iron we've set up the robot He's like the hype man for NBA 2K. And I feel like it's just his main job is to make NBA 2K look cool nails. or feel like the cool game. <laughs> I think it's Ronnie 2K's job to maintain all of those relationships with these people that have these platforms being like, oh, look at NBA 2K in a positive light. Now, the marketing stuff that he does isn't the reason why I buy the game. Don't get me wrong. But it is his job to keep making content about 2K in a positive light. He's not the gameplay director like Mike Wang. He's not cool. Chris Manning, his job is to just promote the game and just hang around cool people. That's how I see it. First thing I think about where I hear Ronnie 2K is salesman. He I think what a lot of people misunderstand about Ronnie is they think he's some kind of developer and his job really no, is not, nobody think he's it's not to develop the game. It's not even know to that. really Everybody inform know that. you about the game, right? What his job is to promote the game, to sell you the game. I think Ronnie gets a lot more focus from us. When things go wrong, he becomes the target. But in reality, he's, he's really just a messenger man the first thing i think of when i think of ronnie 2k a liar <laughs> a scammer a, a, a deceiver a, I'll give people. a coward a fraud Who's on top of that, i would be 
disingenuous if I didn't say also a scapegoat, the face of a bigger problem, a guy that everyone can point to to put unnecessary blame on in some instances. Don't get me wrong, I have my gripes with Ronnie. In my biggest thing, he's a tremendous liar. The way he's maneuvered like he's some type of celebrity, Dang, all that's because all. of he'll the lie. 2K behind his first name. I've never seen someone's ego just inflate with these minuscule connections to these basketball players or celebrities that is just undeserved. We all had the same question. What does Ronnie even do for 2K other than put his face in front of all the bullets they take? What's the first thing that comes to mind when you hear Ronnie 2K? The word extra is the first thing that comes to my mind and I kind of think it's a perfect word. Whenever 2K decides to who Ronnie 2K in the rollout of the game, it's always an extra step that in my opinion, we could do without. 2K21, this year, their whole thing was, yo, we we got a city in the game. They drop a trailer, but there's a whole lot of unanswered questions about what's going to be in the city. How do 2K decide to answer those questions? They make us go to Ronnie 2K's personal YouTube channel, and he's doing a premiere of the city where he's giving us the, our first official tour. And I'm just like, why couldn't y'all drop this on y'all on y'all channel? Yeah, it's right? always an extra step that, in my <laughs> opinion, we could honestly do without. So, what's the first thing I think of when I hear Ronnie 2K? To be honest, when I think of Ronnie. I think of a lot of creators and people not being able to speak their mind because they want benefits, because they want to almost be friends with this, this community figure. All in all, I don't think he's a bad person, but I do think there's a genuine conversation to be had. Does it actually help the community? Do creators, do supporters, do consumers actually benefit from Ronnie 2K being around. When I think of Ronnie 2K, I think of a puppet, a scapegoat, meant to generate hype by any means possible and take backlash meant for 2K. But yeah, man, he just a figurehead. He don't he don't make the game. He controls little. Maybe with the community day stuff. He's just a robot, but he's a goddamn liar. When I hear the name Ronnie 2K, I think of a liar. I don't think it's always 100% his fault. There's definitely miscommunication between the development team and Ronnie 2K, the social media manager. Some of the things he'd be telling us that's in games aren't there. And that's why I think of a liar. So what's the first thing I think of when I hear the name Ronnie 2K? Pathological liar. It's things he didn't have to lie about. It's things that he lied about to attempt to sell the game that I think people would have bought the game anyway. Saying it's not the same neighborhood when it indeed was. Telling us the biggest one, in my opinion, telling people that they can respect their build. And we've never been able to respect anything. Now you just heard a variety of opinions from people who produce 2K content in the community, and most of it was negative. Earlier in this video, I gave a well, few Joey reasons was why negative. people feel this way, but I'm not done just yet. I now want to shift focus to three specific creators. I chose these three people because, honestly, most people hate this man, and we ain't got all day to cover all that hatred. So instead, the first person I want to touch on is... FCC. Flight Team Stand Up! Flight is a very successful content creator on YouTube and Twitch who first opened his YouTube channel back in 2013. He first appeared on my radar around 2015 when he was still fairly unknown, and that's because he began to build a name for himself, Cap'n, for one of the most dog shit video games ever produced, NBA Live 16. We are officially back on the greatest basketball game to ever be created. Now, once NBA Live began to fall off for a second time, I ain't be lying since he was good to me. He's the growing market that was 2K. He used that momentum <laughs> he got from his NBA Live videos to produce 2K related content. I blew up on NBA Live fan of this guy Two, and my favorite type of content he does is when he streams his adventures in the park the people that pull up <laughs> on this man to attempt to drop him off is top tier comedy hold on bro watch him you see that fucking watch him what the fuck oh <laughs> <laughs> shit bitch ass nigga 12 zip fucking broke my controller my nigga <laughs> fuck, fuck damn it bro <laughs> <laughs> Bro, I don't fucking controller! Fuck! 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 But something would change with Flight as he got older. He went from strictly <laughs> making comedic style content and reactions to speaking up against the corporation that is 2K Games. He, like many other virtual hoopers, became frustrated with the worsening gameplay, laggy servers, and the annual increase in VC prices. So he started to use his platform for good. And it turns out that Flight wasn't necessarily the hero we wanted, but he was the hero we needed. You know how lazy 2K is, bro? Like, they didn't even put his number, bro. I just realized that. So Zion Williamson doesn't have a number now? Ronald, you, you Yo, stupid this is ass crazy. fucking dev. Zion doesn't have a fucking number now? Are you serious? 
<laughs> Yo, he is crazy. crazy. I just noticed that shit. Like, imagine marketing something like this and you don't even have his jersey number. One quick search on YouTube and you will find countless rage compilations of flight going at Ronnie 2K and Mike Wayne. All this hatred coming from his heart would eventually lead to several rounds with Ronald. And the most infamous encounter between these two would be over a 2K logo. For those of you who don't play 2K, a logo is something given out annually to certain content creators, celebrities, and NBA players. This special logo floats above players' heads when they're online playing multiplayer. So if anyone sees you in the park, they'll know you're a person of influence. The reason you want a logo is because it made it easier to get games and it made you valid. Yeah, it community. did too, you want to challenge you if they and saw that was that logo. crazy. So it made it easier to get content. And also, I'd imagine it just felt- Mostly like the kids and stuff, especially young kids, yeah, they couldn't get in a group, yo. But you could see they uh, record and uh, they ain't had no logo above their head, y'all. So they had to play with bums. The only way they could get games, they had to play with bums like them. And, mo and they record was bad. <laughs> they record was like super bad. Good for some people in the community because it was also a sign that you quote unquote made it. Logos have been a topic of hot discussion in the community because the way in which they're rewarded is very vague and inconsistent. And some argue it's used as a weapon against the community. A lot of they people do. want a logo, but what comes with that is an allegiance to a man with a fragile ego who's bound to drop you from the creator program, or you just won't get an invite if they don't like the way you speak about the game. If I can yep. interject my own opinion into this topic, I wouldn't say it's ruined 2K because microtransactions did, but the logo certainly hasn't helped. As someone who's been a content creator for almost 18 years, 14 of which has been full time. I've lost count of the number of events that I've been to where I got to preview a game early and produce content for it. And I can honestly say it has never once influenced my thoughts on it. All right, we gonna get to the next person, y'all. People did not like the flip-flopping that 2K and Ronald were doing, so many in the community would go on to say, That's no good. But lucky for Flight, Ronald has incredible stamina, so eventually the two parties would move on. I mean, why beef with him when you could also beef with Agent Beanstar? Before Drake made it uncool to beef on <laughs> Toronto, there was a creator that managed to sneak through US Customs in the early 2010s, and his name was Agent. Agent first rose to prominence on YouTube producing your typical 2K content on whatever was the new game at the time. He had your standard My Career videos, tutorials, park fun, moments and more but i think he really had his glow up around the time that he gave up like 2k21 agent had this series where he would do a parody of a racist garden gnome who thought he was as fast as barry allen but more importantly he just loved to shout everybody type in the chat alex is a stupid <laughs> Jokes aside, in this series, Agent would use his platform to criticize the game that he loved. The highlight for me is a documentary he produced called Goodbye NBA 2K. For 15 minutes, he stood in the middle of the forest dressed like an extra in SOCOM Fireteam Bravo, breaking down the downfall of NBA 2K. And some would even say this video of him standing in the forest is what influenced the new WNBA parks in 2K25. You're done. You're done. In Agent's content, he never really <laughs> raised his voice, and I don't recall him ever calling anybody out of their name. He just critiqued the game, oh, my and camera. everyone loved him because. No. Oh. The main thing I recall him doing is introducing the word latency to the mainstream. I and you other see, gamers yeah. who play all types of games knew what that was, but when he started saying it, 2K heads adopted the word latency, like black folks adopted the word prerogative, and Bobby Brown dropped his Don't Be Cruel album in 1988. <laughs> Everyone loved him for being the voice of the little guy. Everyone except for Ronnie 2K. He didn't like being called out for his lack of transparency and just flat out lying at times, and this led to Agent not being invited to Community Day, a day where creators get early access to the latest games so they can produce content early and get all the views. Tensions really came to a boiling point when Ronald said Agent should be grateful because he was the only reason Agent could stay in America. Keep in mind, he's Canadian. Ronnie claimed he was the reason Agent's what? visa was greenlit, but Agent had some pushback on that. Being in America, if it wasn't for me, I helped him with a visa and now, like, you guys don't know- I remember this, yo, he lied. I helped him with a visa. I remember this. He come to America. I wrote him a letter and then he has the audacity to continue to act poorly towards me, so, yeah, I, I don't, I don't really like that very much. If I do you a favor of such an attitude, that's a problem. Agent acknowledged that Ronnie did sign a document for his O-1 visa, which is typically for individuals with extraordinary abilities such as athletes and entertainers. However, Agent did clarify that document Ronnie signed was not ultimately used in the successful visa application because it had expired. Instead, Agent relied on other support, including from his immigration lawyer and other contacts to secure his visa. He argued mm. that Ronnie exaggerated his role in the process and then he used it as leverage to influence Agent's content and interactions with the 2K community. Basically, he said, 
Ronnie is a master manipulator and he loves to throw around. So accusations. These are not accusations. This is false accusations. And by the way, as far as the community day stuff goes, if I could add one more side note, I'm not going to say no names and I'm not going to show no DMs. This is a moment where you're going to have to choose to either take my word for it or you can just think I'm a liar. But you remember that montage of creators earlier in this video talking about Ronnie? Well, they weren't the only people I wanted in this video. I sent out a ton of DMs and I had several people who attended the 2024 community day respond to mm -hmm. me. Was something along the lines of a variation of like, I have stories about Ronald, but uh, I don't want to be messy. They got signed the contract. Bridges, so I'd rather leave they it They got signed the contract, decision, bro. But I will say, it's hard to call something community day if a good portion of your community is afraid to speak their mind. Lucky for No, they ain't afraid. They signed all the people that's there signed the contract, yo. When they signed that contract, that contract probably lasts for one to two years. I remember Chris moved to one of those events. It took him two years to say anything negative about 2K. But I'm going to go ahead and end it right here, y'all. Y'all like what y'all see? Like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you when I see you.